Hello everybody, this is Dr. Jesse Jackson III, best-selling author and facilitator of the Don't Kick Em Out book and training series. One thing that we are really uh, promoting now is this process of student management. And as we want to develop and get better at student management, it's going to be vital that we have some foundational pillars that are involved in every single building uh, in the country, particularly when you want to set a disciplined foundation. If you are a building or district that has to deal with discipline issues, uh, say with 10% of your students or above, this is the type of thing or type of foundation you want to set in your school and something you want to consistently be working on with staff and when you're setting the climate and culture and they are as follows. Number one, getting people to work together. Now you know uh, that working together is not a popular thing. It's not something we're taught. We don't do it a lot in school. We're not taught how to work together. So teaching teamwork it's something it's a it's an infrastructure that you have to teach to your adults on your team we often you know for a behavior program to work it is very reliant on everyone working together what we see is that when buildings fail with behavior we notice that people don't run the same program we see that people have their own opinions we see that people are going to enforce the rules as they see fit they don't enforce them as it has been prescribed by leadership. And so building leadership sets the tone about what we're going to do with discipline. And I like, particularly with staff, you know, I like to simplify our rules. I think we have too many rules, but I like to come up with really three solid things that we call no goals in our building, no goals. And when there's a no go, it becomes important that we all agree on the no go and understand why the no go is there. Now on staff, on, on, on in a team, I've been outvoted before. So one thing I understand about a team, the majority will rule. And it was one thing that I didn't didn't agree with and didn't think worked. But it, it, the 90, not 90, 70 plus percent of the teachers said that what we were doing helped them. I went with it and just went with it because that's team. We're not taught that. We have folks that'll get offended, get mad, and uh, stop speaking to one another, and teams don't work that way. We we find that when a, when a building struggles, it's because we will not all run the same program. It will have eight teachers that can manage the kid, two that can't, and those two that can't will create a, a firestorm or a residual effect within the staff because it, it, you know we'll see you with the first two periods of the day and be out of uniform. Now it's third period. They're enforcing the rule like, what's up? And then now the kids get mad. Well, like I was with Miss Harris all day and she didn't even say nothing. And before you know it, I have infighting in my staff. And this is what becomes the problem. Everybody has to do the same thing. Everybody must enforce the rules, period, period. Consistency of enforcing the rules is what helps us working together. And then we all do it 192 days of the school year. If we're not going to be consistent, we're going to lose behavior. We're going to lose the behavior value. If we are going to be a four day teacher or three and a half day a week teacher, we're going to lose the behavior value. It has to be done consistently. Communication, it's an art. It's two ways, listening, talking, level tone, body language. The teacher's typically good at talking. Teacher's typically not cognizant of level tone, typically not cognizant of body language. Both of these things can escalate a situation with a kid that was easily dis, dis, uh, diffusible. Body language, level tone. These are things that we have to be aware of. We have to communicate with this kid. Of course, we can tell them what to do, but until we like communicate with them and they understand what we want them to do and they understand it, we're not going to gain grounds. Rules have to be explained, have to be discussed. You don't tell people to just to do. I mean, even with your own children, they have to be explained why we're doing things. I seen something last night or a commercial and, and the mom said, uh, do this. And the kid said, why? Because I said so. Listen. I get that part. What I'm saying is this kid doesn't know enough to have that deficit of understanding. Just these are our rules. Do it. Follow the rules. They really need to understand what are we doing here? Why are cell phones not allowed in class? It's rude. You know, it's rude. Why do we have uniforms here? Infrastructure. Why can you not blurt out in class? It's rude. It breaks my flow and it distracts others. You got to be taught this stuff. Why do you need to have your supplies when you come to class? When you go to work, you need to have your equipment to be ready to work. These are things that kids need to understand. And so when we're, you know, putting emphasis on behavior, we got to put emphasis on teaching 
what we are trying to get accomplished and they have to understand why we we're, we ask them to do the things we do when you do that it just makes it easier to get it done then you have confrontation that's the process where you have to confront kids telling them they're wrong a lot of us are not comfortable with confrontation our personality is not a confronter confrontation is not negative conflict is negative confrontation it has to be necessary in any relationship of value if you want to have a relationship that matters you got to confront i mean your children your spouse it's pretty normal uh, a co-worker or particularly your subordinates confrontation is something that is, is just a part of that process and then confidence kids will not are not attracted to kids that uh, are to teachers that don't have confidence and what we see when a, when a teacher is really struggling with her confidence or his confidence, they're not that kid often takes advantage of them and they're seen as weak. You can't hide confidence from children. So if you're not a confident person and you're not a person that a kid wants to follow and wants to listen to, you'll find yourself having more and more issues. This is not a generation that's going to listen to a teacher just because you're a teacher. It's not going to work. These are the five base strategies that I know will improve your school-wide discipline practices. These are things that we can consistently pound and teach and show teachers how to in influence that environment with this. If you get these five right, everything else you're trying to do can fall into place. These are the foundational five principles that starts a sound discipline philosophy at a school and the practice at a school. So if you're doing positive behavior support, this allows it to go better. If you're doing restorative justice, this allows all of that to go much, much better. Dr. Jackson here, share these videos with your colleagues. And as always, if I can help you with anything, please don't hesitate to let us know. Thank you so much. And I will see you in class. Take care.